Welcome to Government Executives Excellence in Government Podcast. I'm Mark Michelli. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube have enabled government to bypass traditional media outlets and directly engage with citizens, often in the process highlighting government's more human side, even if that humanity is, in fact, for a robot. Today, we're very excited to be joined by Veronica McGregor, manager of the News and Social Media Office at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory and the voice behind two of the government's most popular Twitter accounts, at Mars Curiosity and at Asteroid Watch. The Mars Curiosity account has 1.4 million followers and shares the latest discoveries beamed from the Mars Curiosity rover on the surface of Mars. Asteroid Watch communicates the latest in NASA's ongoing effort to detect, track, and characterize potentially hazardous asteroids and comets that could approach the Earth. Both of these accounts have been put on hiatus during the government shutdown. Veronica, thank you for joining us. Uh, Thank you. Happy to be here. Now, as a result of the shutdown, 97% of NASA employees have been furloughed and social media has been suspended. What has been um, the reaction from the millions of people who follow NASA social media channels? Well, we have seen a really uh, sort of heartwarming development with a lot of our followers who have um, been communicating with us over social media now for a few years, and many of them have actually attended in-person events that we hold at NASA centers called NASA Socials. So they feel like they have a real, you know, inside look into how the agency works, and uh, and we give them, you know, incredible access when they come to our centers for these events. So we've seen this uh, particular group of users take to social media with a hashtag, what NASA might tweet, and they're trying to fill the gap, and they're trying to uh, continue spreading a lot of um, news about NASA, about NASA programs. Some of their tweets are, are current with things that are going on today, um, and they're also posting a lot of historical information and some, some interesting factoids. And, uh, you know, in the course of the last several days, they've, they've posted over 8,000 tweets with wow. that hashtag, um, and uh, this is uh, over 2,000, almost 2,500 users doing this. Um, this, to me, validates all of the work that we have done in the last several years in social media, where we first just went online and invited them to follow us, but not just follow, but have a conversation with us. And uh, and then we started doing these in-person accounts to get as many people in as we could to get these real behind-the-scenes looks into what their space agency is doing. Explain to me how both Mars Curiosity and the Asteroid Watch um, Twitter accounts came to be. How did they grow in popularity so fast? Or did they grow so fast? Well, it, it, Mars Curiosity, some people might be surprised, has been on Twitter since uh, 2008. And wow. um, the, it actually came on right after our first account on Twitter, which was Mars Phoenix, a lander uh, near the North Pole of Mars that was on Twitter and, and extremely popular on Twitter that summer of 2008. It was the fifth most followed account. Wow. Um, back back in 2008, you only needed about 40,000 followers to be the fifth most followed account. But it showed us that there was this audience that really was craving um, news about our missions, and they really, just as much as wanting information, they wanted to ask questions and they wanted to get answers. So because of the popularity of that account for that mission, which ended at the end of 2008, I opened up the account for Curiosity, which was at that time under construction. And, uh, of course, you know, the account was sort of, you know, picking up steam as we got closer and closer to launch. Um, I, I do have a couple other staff members here who um, are also writing tweets for that account, and it's been great that I've been able to bring on a few more people since um, since back when we started because it is time-consuming to, to operate these accounts. And uh, between the three of us, um, we have a lot of fun um, giving people news about what Curiosity is doing during landing and now during surface operations, and we try to make it a lot of fun. We try to make it interesting enough that people are going to click on our links because there's always something there that we're asking them to look at or read more about. And um, and uh, the account, you know, following landing shot up to over the million mark uh, very quickly. And at Asteroid Watch, I'll say, was, you know, very different. Um, we started that account, and it shot to a million followers immediately. <laughs> and the thing that was most interesting about that account is, you know, here we were operating, operating these other accounts that had people who were very excited about NASA and NASA's work, and we would post things and people would get excited. Asteroid Watch was a completely different group of people following. Um, and, and I discovered that when I started posting the first tweet. We here get excited when there's an asteroid that's coming within a certain distance of Earth that we're going to be able to turn our telescopes on it and study it. But when I tweeted something like that, of course, you could see that people were actually very, very worried about asteroids. 
and things that were coming close to earth. And so I had to change my my voice on that account to make sure that people knew that we were reassuring them that we were watching for these and that something that's coming this close to earth is not going to be a danger. It's going to be something that will be fascinating for us to study. So I learned very quickly it was not so much a, a NASA fan group on that account. It, it was really people uh, coming from other walks. And my goal has been on that account, since it has such a large following, is to expose them to all the other things that NASA is doing. And, you know, hopefully they will cross over and, and become, you know, part of our larger fan fan base. So I think sassy is probably the wrong word uh, to describe the curiosity of the account, but the rover certainly has a personality. Um, and, and when you thought about trying to give personality to an inanimate object like Curiosity, how did you and your team ultimately settle on the voice to give it? Sure, and, and we call it Bravada. You know, she's, <laughs> she's a really big rover. Um, Phoenix, the first Twitter account, the, the Mars Phoenix landing, had this really happy-go-lucky, um, you know, eternal optimist sort of point of view of being on Mars because it was going to die very early uh, because it was going to freeze to death. It was not a <laughs> rover. It was a lander. So it had sort of, you know, this other kind of personality to it. Um, Curiosity is the biggest rover that we have ever sent to another planet. It is the most capable rover. Um, if you compare the sizes with pre previous rovers, you know, she, she towers over them. So um, it was pretty easy to come up with that personality. She's, she's a big, bad rover, and she knows it, and she's got, you know, a laser on her head and, you know, all these fantastic science instruments. And bringing in a couple other people onto the social media team here was, you know, hugely beneficial because we got more voices also into the personality. And a lot of the personality also comes from the mission team itself. You know, we listen to what the engineers and the scientists are saying, if they say something really cool about, you know, how they see what she's doing, then we'll try to incorporate that into the voice as well. So um, she's been, it's been a lot of fun uh, to do that account. It's been really uh, just as much fun to see people's reaction to it. What does the success of these accounts tell you about, one, the interest of citizens in the space program, and, and two, the opportunity government has to engage with citizens through social media? Yeah, you know, it, it's amazing to me to think that prior to 2008, we didn't have this method of communicating directly to the public, and and our office used to only be able to do the the news releases that you know, and we're still we still do those, and, and traditional media is still a large part of what we do, but we didn't get that direct feedback. So when we as soon as we opened up this um, method of communication. And we got feedback. One, we discovered that there was, you know, people loved to hear about our missions. They wanted more information, not less. And they wanted to know every single step of the mission, not just the launch and the landing or when something went wrong. They wanted to know day-to-day -day operations. And that was something that we could never get into traditional media. So we opened up this this line of communication. And, and I think what people appreciated the most was that we didn't just push out information to them. Uh, we, anytime we post a tweet, we know that we're going to have someone sit and watch that Twitter account for the next couple of hours and respond to the questions that are going to come in. And people, you know, just love being able to get an answer back from NASA very quickly when they have a question. We learned a lot about what people didn't understand about our missions. We learned what information we had taken for granted. We thought people understood this or that about, you know, the way, the, way the rover operates on Mars. Um, and when we get these questions in, we realize that we have to do another product, maybe a, a feature story or a video to explain how something works. And then a, a later tweet will send people to that to that link. So we've done, you know, videos on why some cameras are black and white and why some are color. You know, how do the communications links work between Mars and Earth? Some of those questions, um, seeing those questions come in have really taught us a lot about how we can do our job better and what information people need. Going beyond Twitter, can you tell me a little bit about your office and um, some of its other responsibilities? When I started here uh, back in 2001, this is a traditional media relations office, and I came directly from CNN where I used to cover NASA and JPL. Um, and so, you know, back then you had two or three products that you would do. We would do the video news releases and the, and the um, uh, press releases and turn those over to traditional media and have them go ahead and, and distribute that news and information. So over the years, we have, um, you know, we, we jumped into every new uh, venue and platform that we could. We were on iTunes the week it opened. We, you know, got a YouTube account fairly early, and, and our editors were more than happy to start doing something other than video news releases and making some really compelling videos for posting. 
Um, we do, uh, you know, and then as social media came along, we, we jumped into that as well. So today, we are no longer just a traditional media relations office. We're, we're trying to do a little bit of everything. And, and it's extremely, it is time consuming. Um, it's, you know, changed the way uh, we look to do products, maybe shorter products and more of them instead of fewer products that are longer. Um, we're always looking to see, you know, what is the best way, what, are, what is the way that's resonating best with people and, and the way that they want to receive their news. What are you finding to be um, the most interesting tools at your disposal? What have been some of the really creative, fun, or, or unique ways you found to engage citizens? Gosh, there's so many different ways. You know, we, we treat each platform a little bit differently. Um, we would never try to have our posts to Facebook also go to Twitter or vice versa. Everything has to be unique. I mean, we'll post the same information, but, um, you know, to Facebook, it's always accompanied by an image, and we can put more information there. So I, I find that every single one of them is wonderful, and um, I find that, you know, uh, that things that you put out on, on Twitter can be shared so quickly, and that's, you know, one of our goals is to make sure people are sharing the information with their friends so that uh, more people will come and read the information. Um, one of the things I'm probably most proud about, though, is the um, the in-person events that we started. We did that here in, in 2009. We did our first one here at JPL, and we invited um, about 120 people to come in one evening and go behind the scenes, go and see actually Curiosity was being built at that time, and to come and meet the scientists and the engineers who were working on our missions. Now, we do public tours all the time here, and, and we have fabulous tour guides, but, but the goal for these special events was to have the scientists and the engineers be the tour guides and really talk one-on-one -on -one with, with the people who came in. And we did this one event, and it went over so well um, that, you know, it's been adopted by NASA. There's been over 70 events held now across the country at many different NASA centers and even at other space agencies. The European Space Agency has adopted it, the French Space Agency, and the Canadian Space Agency. So they're doing it in their countries, bringing people in. The thing that was most remarkable to us was that we knew they were coming in to meet us, but they met each other. And these connections formed. Uh, they had seen each other online before, but as soon as they met each other, they became this amazing group of advocates for us that has, they, they stay in touch with each other. They have Facebook alumni pages. They update Wikipedia pages. Um, I, I see them talking to each other and sharing duties. And that brings me back full circle to this, you know, Twitter hashtag they created um, in the last uh, 10 days or so of things NASA might tweet. And, um, and there they are working. They've even set up schedules. Uh, I, I've only, I only know this because I'm reading their tweets. They've set up schedules and they're taking turns to, to put out as much NASA news and information as they can while we're um, not able to do that. As you look to the future of government communications and I guess social media in particular, what has you excited? Where do, where do you think the, the future of citizen engagement is, is headed? I wish I had a crystal ball. You know, we're always, um, I mean, I think it's open. It's so open right now, and, and the, there's so many different channels for people to talk to us. Um, uh, I, I can't see that anything is going to, to go back the way it was where we didn't have this direct communication, but I don't know which platforms are going to be the most useful uh, in the future. So we're always sort of investigating to see what's coming up and new. I didn't mention earlier Reddit. We've We've also been putting our scientists and engineers out on Reddit because we find that's an um, incredibly effective way uh, for people to get some direct information from NASA. We know that our stories on Reddit are very popular because we can monitor the traffic that's coming in from that site, um, the referrals that, that come over to our pages because of people posting things on Reddit. So, you know, it's a matter of trying to stay up, and um, that, that even that's even a lot of work just to try to always stay in the know of what new platforms are coming in and which ones are gaining popularity. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll continue to, sometimes we're trying a couple different ones at once um, just until we know which one's going to move ahead. Um, and so I think, you know, the, the thing that makes it difficult is that it is a little bit time consuming to do it the way we want to do it, which is always responding to people. Um, you know, I hope we don't get to a point where we just only are pushing out, you know, headlines and things like that. The, the goal for me has always been to, to make it a two-way conversation. And I, I just see that, you know, that, that that's definitely going to continue. I don't see that changing. For other public affairs teams or, or folks in government thinking about how they can engage citizens and, and share their mission more effectively, what advice do you have um, from your own success? What might be some of the ways you and your team approach citizen communications that has really made a difference that others could learn from? 
I think one thing is, you know, we I, I value Twitter as an incredible tool, but I don't over rely on Twitter. And I do see that sort of happening in, in other um, uh, groups um, across all sorts of different agencies. I'm not a big fan of Twitter chats. I, I see very low interaction in those. It's usually people who are already your followers, and you can't save that conversation effectively and make it available to people later. So I tend to stay away from that. But again, I love putting things on Twitter and watching how people can spread the information. Um, I do think that longer, more in-depth conversations and things that can be archived um, are, are more effective, and so that's one reason we've been doing a lot of the Reddit um, Ask Me Anything chats, or we've just gone on some of the Reddit subreddit pages that are more specific to what our engineer can talk about and doing smaller chats with maybe you know a couple hundred um, of people participating. On, on the Reddit AMA page, Ask Me Anything, you might get a, a couple thousand people interacting with you. But, you know, I, I like to target um, people to, to the right audience and, um, you know, make a, we'll do things that are specifically for women to get women encouraged to go into science and engineering and we'll do things specific to earth science. Um, and, and you have to look for the best places to do those and not rely on just one platform that you've become familiar with. Veronica, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. My pleasure. Veronica McGregor is the manager of news and social media at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, providing the voice, among other things, for the Mars Curiosity rover on Twitter. You can follow her on Twitter at Veronica McG and keep up on the latest from NASA's Curiosity and Asteroid Watch Twitter accounts. Thanks for listening to the Excellence in Government podcast. Check us out on Twitter at GovExec or on the web at GovExec.com. To subscribe, search iTunes or Stitcher for GovExec. I want to thank podcast producers Ross Gian Portuni and Kelly Martin and our guest Veronica McGregor. I'm Mark Michelli, and this has been the Excellence in Government podcast.